All right, welcome back YouTube. Today we got something a little bit different in the vise. We've got a eighth ounce Jinko jig head. I tied this one a couple days ago, didn't like the way it looked. Took my knife, cleaned it off. I still got a little bit of thread wrapped up right there. That's what that is. I couldn't, couldn't get all that material off that jig. So I took a knife and I scraped it all back off and we're gonna tie something a little bit different today. We're gonna do, um, like I said, it's an eighth ounce Jinko jig head. Got them from Bass Pro. A little pricey. Very high quality, very uh, durable. And I like that pink head with that green eye in the middle of it. So today we're gonna tie this up using some bucktail. We're gonna put a little, quite a bit of material in this because I've got a wide head to work with. So I can build up a pretty thick body on this and still keep the shape contour of the jig the way I want it so we're gonna be using pink bucktail chartreuse bucktail we're gonna be using pink chartreuse flash we're gonna be using chartreuse Chanel for the body and like I said we're gonna make it kind of thick so let's see what we come up with since I'm gonna be using chartreuse um, Chanel for the body, we're also going to be using um, chartreuse thread to wrap it up with. And we are using today 140 denier. So let's get started. I've already put a little bit of base on it. Uh, I'm Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And if you decide you're going to tie with these Jinko jig heads, they've got a wire bait keeper on it. And that wire bait keeper was very hard to cut off and bend down to where I could tie with it. I didn't want that piece of wire sticking up out of my jig head and through the body. So I snipped it off, left a little sharp piece there on it. I had a hard time getting that thread on it. Every time that thread hit that sharp piece, it cut it. And that's actually why I ended up cutting this jig. I retied it and retied it and retied it. And it just kind of looked like crap and I gave up on it. Since we got that green eye, we're going to put chartreuse in the middle of our body and then we're going to surround it with pink. So we're going to have just a little bit of chartreuse going straight out the middle of it. And I'm trimming that off right now. And we want that chartreuse to go all the way around the shank of the hook. Because like I said, that's going to be the very middle of the body. And we're going to wrap it down and see what turn it over and see what it looks like. If we didn't get it completely on the other side, we might put a little bit more in it. Yeah, it's a little bare right there on that side. So we're going to fill that in. So let's put that right there where that bare spot is. I'm still kind of being careful as I wrap my thread around it because I'm afraid I'm going to hit whatever is left of that bait keeper. All right, so we got our chartreuse running right down through the middle. So next, we're going to put pink all the way around that. Man, I put that camera right there in front of here is where I usually cut all my stuff at and I blocked it with that camera. Not really a camera, it's my cell phone. I was gonna, when I started doing this, I was gonna do it with like a GoPro. There's just way too much transferring that over to my tablet and then transferring it back to getting it transferred onto YouTube and I just put a lot of work in it. I'm sure somebody out there is probably thinking, well, it's awful easy, you big dummy. But one thing about my cell phone is I can't edit it. I can. I've got a, you know, Galaxy phone. I don't have the options like the iPhone do to edit it. I'm sure, and it might on there somewhere. I'm sure I don't utilize my phone at all to what it could actually probably do. But that's all right. I get by pretty good with my cell phone. 
but I've got some pretty good footage tied up in my camera that I had. It wasn't a GoPro, it was kind of a cheaper knockoff Walmart version. And there's a, I think there's a few videos I posted on YouTube that came off that camera. All right, so we got pink kind of working its way around it. I'm gonna need a little more pink right here. Add when you, if you're tying a jig like this, add in small portions of bucktail. You can always go back later and add more. You get it built up too thick, you can't, you know, you might end up in a spot where you can't add anymore. And we're getting pretty close to filling the neck of that head up right now. And I still got a couple strands of flash I want to put in there with it. And then plus I still got my Chanel I need to put on. So we're gonna stop like right there. I didn't completely surround the chartreuse like I wanted to, but I still got it coming out the middle of the tail. I'm still pretty happy with that. So now we're gonna add some flash to it. I like that, it's kind of got a pink tone to it. We're gonna put it right on one side. Slay it over, make it a little bit easier for us. Put it right there. I think I've missed it every pass. There we go, we got it. Tie it back up. Kind of see it in there. It probably ain't quite as much as what I probably should have put in, but sometimes when you're, you know, think of a jig you want to tie. A lot, a lot of, a lot of times I'll tie. You know, if I got 10, 15 jigs at one time, the first one or two, usually the first one is kind of a practice run. You know, I could tie that first one and then figure out what I need or don't need for the rest of them. We're gonna trim that flash up a little bit. So that's what we got going so far, right here. Got a little piece of flash coming out this side. That's chartreuse. A little piece of flash coming out this side is pink. A little bit hard to see. This light right above me is putting a beating on stuff, but we're gonna start tying more jigs with um, with jig heads like this. I'm actually um, have a little quality issue with right now with some material and I'm gonna to have to probably stop selling for a couple weeks, a couple months, so I get everything straightened out with that. But this is the Chanel we're gonna use. I have no idea the name of it. What it's actually called, it's probably like a medium, a little bit smaller. I got that shaft of that hook a little fuller than what I thought I was going to. So we're going to go to a little bit smaller Chanel. I'm going to put another coat of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails right here on the body. Just for like a little bit of insurance. Make sure things don't come unraveled. And we're going to start wrapping it. Pretty tight wraps. You can watch the jig head move so you can kind of tell how much pressure I've got on that. Get right to where your thread is. You're going to go right up against the head of the jig, pull it back down and wrap it back over. So that way you've got that Chanel strapped down. You know it's not going to go anywhere. And just to make it, make sure we're going to wrap it one more time around it and go back up around. A couple, three, four, five wraps, tighten it up. And we're going to trim that off and I think we got a pretty good shape right there so 
So now we are going to do our whip finish. Right against the thread in the neck. Make a triangle. One, two, three, four, five. Pop it loose. Let's get one more knot in that. Pop it out, pull it, give it a good tight tug, trim it off. Now when I get to that spot, I've seen some people tie jigs and they, some do this part and some don't do this part. But I struggled for a long time trying to figure out how to get that glued down. And the best thing I've come up with and I've watched uh, somebody else do it, I can't remember who. If you buy a fly tying kit, it's gonna come with this. Even a toothpick would work. I'm gonna put that right inside that. It's Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And there's a drip of it right on top there. That knot ended right there at the top of that head. So we're gonna brush that right in there where that knot is. And then we're gonna push a little extra down around the rest of it. And don't take much, just a uh, little bit what you got on there. And we are done. And that is an Eric Massey Crappie Company Jig. Eric Massey Jig Company. Had to change some things. It was getting a little too hard to find for people to find me, so I changed everything. Instagram. Facebook, uh, YouTube is now Eric Massey Jig Company. Kind of makes things a little bit easier to find. That is what we got. Pink chartreuse and the Jinko Jig Heads make a very pretty jig. Very nice jig. I like it. I trust it. It's glued down. It's a quality head. It's sharp hook that's an awesome jig I can't wait to get that one in the water and see how it works uh, questions comments like share subscribe let me know what you want to see if you've gotten jigs for me I like to see some pictures of some fish with them or fish period just uh, like I said find me on Facebook Eric Massey jig company like that page Share that page. We'll probably be doing a uh, pretty good giveaway. If I can get everybody transferred over to that page, I can get it up to a thousand. I think we're going to give away some decals, some shirts, um, maybe some jigs. But like I said, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. See you, YouTube. That's all I got.